Kitchens. It's your girl Mala coming to you from Mala's Kitchen to yours. And guess what? We've got a fabulous menu ready and prepped and about to get started on, right? So stick around and uh, check it out. Hola foodies, this is your girl Mala coming to you once again from the wonderful Mala's Kitchen to yours. And today we're getting ready to make, guess what? Mobileye Cuisine. And today on the menu is lamb korma, authentic Mogali style, or rather Mogali style lamb korma. And I'm going to go over a couple of the ingredients that we have here. Of course, I've got some lamb that I've washed and prepped already. I have not seasoned this, and I'll go over and tell you the reason why. I've got around about five medium red onions. You can use three large onions if you choose to. Of course, going into this, we'll be using some Greek yogurt as the base of our gravy and a bunch of spices for a masala. To be fair and to be honest, there are not many people who actually know the difference between Awadi and Mogulai style cuisine. And quite frankly, we can blame that on the restaurant industry who pass off a jumble of foods as Awadi or Mogulai using the term pretty much interactively and together, meaning the same thing. As a matter of fact, Awad was the region in central India that covered parts of Uttar Pradesh and a little portion of Nepal. It's a fertile, gigantic region that produced some of the finest grains in the country. That cuisine was native to Lucknow and was influenced by Bhojpuri, Mogulai, and even Hyderabadi and Kashmiri culinary traditions. The Nawabs, rather kings, of Awad had their kitchens kansamas, meaning chefs, their head chefs, from all of these regions and hence the influence was quite pertinent. But still, Awadi food has its own distinct character and it's quite different from Mogulai cuisine. So for the purposes of our video here today, since this is going to be a lamb korma Mogulai style, we're going to go through everything that I'm going to use here, which is present here on this countertop. And just a note, the difference between Mogulai cuisine in this particular version, there are no use of nuts. There's going to be no use of tomatoes, no um, green chilies, no ginger, and certainly no curry leaves as well. If you were using any of those, that would pretty much turn into a more of a hydro body version. But this is authentic Mogulai style lamb korma that we're going to be use we're going to be doing here today. And like I said, it's an authentic recipe from the Royal Mogul Kitchens, specifically the Delhi area. Alrighty, so let's go over some of these spices that I'll be using to make this garam masala spice mix for our authentic Mogul style lamb korma, or you can call it a muffin korma. So let's see, what do we have here? We've got star anise, black cardamom, green cardamom, red chilies whole, cinnamon or dalcini, mace or java three, cloves, I believe that's also called long, uh, bay leaves, we've got some black peppercorns, we've got some red chili powder, and some turmeric powder over here. And of course the chili powder here I'll be using is a Kashmiri style chili powder because this is more of a low heat threshold in this particular style of chili powder because I'm using it more for a little on the flavor but more of the color it will give to the dish. I'm gonna go ahead and get all these spices into a nice skillet over here. Of course only the whole spices and we'll be toasting that up in just a little bit. Alrighty foodies, so as you can see, I've got my onions all nicely chopped up over here. And of course, these were the five medium red onions, of course. And uh, if you didn't have five uh, medium onions, you can certainly use three large onions instead. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this. Over here in this beautiful Dutch oven over here that I've got, of course, it's cast iron, it's heavy bottom, and really good for frying and for cooking these types of dishes here. I've got some ghee in here heating up, and that's, of course, clarified butter. I've put 13 ounces in there because we're going to deep fry these babies right over here. Pop them out and save them into this little bowl. Then I'll show you what I'm going to do with them next. And in goes our first batch of onions that I'm going to deep fry. And of course, in addition to our lamb, the main star of this dish here is basically the onions because the onions is what's going to give our gravy and that korma its signature taste. Now remember I told you this is not Awadi style cooking, it is Mughal style cooking. Now Mughal style cooking is basically without a few ingredients, right? So we talked about that it's not going to have any nuts in it, even though in certain other parts of the regions it does. But for this particular version, no, it's not. So for Mughal style cooking, it does not have. It's not going to have any type of curry leaves. We're not going to be adding any garlic into this either. And of course, no tomatoes and curry leaves like they would use in mutton recipes in the south. So look at how beautiful my onions look. So I'm going to take these babies out and get ready with the next batch. Alrighty, my foodie guys and dolls, as you can see, I'm done deep frying all of our beautiful red onions and they're nice golden brown and crispy. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let them cool and sit off to the side. When they're completely cooled, I'm going to pound them. So they're nice and it may turn into a paste or it may be much more, actually, it will break up all of these pieces. So it'll be a lot more smaller pieces to add to that gravy in a little while. For now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I've got my pan heating up here. Of course, the oil is still nice and hot. I've got it on a very low setting. I'm going to start adding our lamb or rather mutton pieces to that nice hot oil, that ghee that we just used. And I'm going to brown it on each side. I'm going to basically partially cook it then scoop it right out. And then we're going to get started on the gravy. But prior to that, we're going to do the braising of the meat first. I'm gonna start getting those meats in and as you notice I've cut the lamb, the mutton, right off the bone and I've got this really big piece here that's left. I'm going to braise that as well because all of that is really good flavor. I'm gonna get all these pieces in and let them do its thing. And our meat or a lamb has a decent enough tan on it. As you can see, I just slightly braised it because we're going to finish the rest of the cooking in the gourmet sauce. So I'm just gonna get these babies out and we're gonna get started on our dry spice mix. Alrighty, so I've went ahead and I've gotten out all of our nice lamb pieces, nicely braised up. It's got a beautiful little tan on it. I'm gonna let that cool for a second and we're gonna work on our spice mix here, which is our garam masala. Now, previously I went over the spices with you, but I forgot to mention two more, which I added, which is pretty much what you would find in the basic garam masala mix. So let's go over again. We've got some red chilies over here. We've got three cloves, which I'm using. We've got Javi three over here, which is basically this here is mace, actually, not Java 3, mace, a piece of mace. We've got some cumin seeds. We've got some black peppercorns. We've got some green cardamoms, a one black cardamom. And of course, over here, we've got some coriander seeds, okay? So this here, I'm just going to simply toast up now. When they're nice and fragrant, we're going to pound them into a powder. So let me continue with that. So our spices are nicely toasted up and fragrant. As you can see, they've changed in color and it smells beautiful in this hair kitchen. Look at that. 
Yep, the colors have changed. Yep, it's a nice brown, beautiful, nutty scent. And it's going to give beautiful flavor. So I'm going to take this off the heat now. Now we're going to get ready to pound this in a few different ways, actually. I'm going to show you a few different ways that you can do it. Or you can simply put it in a coffee grinder and get it all done. Alrighty, so there are a couple of different ways that you can pound your spices into a powder. The first way is you could use a mortar and pestle. This one here is also known as a mocajate. It's a, a Mexican. You will use this pestle and just kind of crush the spices like this until you get the desired consistency that you like. As you can see, it's already starting to powder in there. The other way would be using a smaller one, popping this pestle on, pounding it in here, spinning it around, and as you can see, it's already changing. So you keep pounding until you get the desired consistency of this. The last method would be old style, which is my grandma style. My mom used to use this also back in the day. It's called using a masala brick. Now this belonged to my grandmother, I believe it belonged to uh, her mother as well. So I'm talking about my great nanny, my nanny, and my mom, and now passed on to me. So this here is a little bit of history from my mom's side of the family. So again, I've added a little bit of this spice mix here. And what you do is you pretty much hold this piece here and put it in between your hands and just slowly kind of go over grinding the spices in this way. And pretty much you're gentle when you do it. Of course, you're going to be using both hands. And again, as you can see, it's already starting to become a fine powder. The other way would be simply using a coffee grinder, which does the job really great as well and comes into a beautiful fine powder. Time to get started on pounding those fried onions that we did before. We're going to make this into somewhat of a paste and it looks gorgeous. Now do not be afraid if it looks a bit pasty because that's fine. It's going to melt beautifully into the gravy. So I'm going to continue with this until we're all nice and done. Okay, so our spice powder is already done, our masala. I went ahead and added a cup and a half of Greek yogurt to this. I added our garam masala, which is our spice powder mix that we just made, a full tablespoon of turmeric, turmeric, and now I'm going to add a full tablespoon of Kashmiri Lal Mirch, which is basically red chili powder, but it has a lower heat index than the regular chili powder because we're using this for a little bit of flavor as well as color. Now, over here, I've got the same pot that I was using with the leftover ghee that we've did our lamb in and we've did our onions in. So that's a lot of flavor in there. I'm going to use this continuously now. So I'm going to mix these all up and add it to our hot oil. But before, those two bay leaves that we add out, well, we're gonna drop these right in and let that flavor up that oil. And then next, I'm gonna just mix this up just like so until everything is nice and incorporated. Then we're going to lower that heat and we're going to add this yogurt right into that mixture, right into that hot oil. So our paste is nicely ready here with our masalas or Kashmiri uh, lal mirch or chili powder in there or turmeric and of course yogurt. I, if you notice, I've added it to a long, tall wooden spoon because I do not want to get burned. So I'm going to slowly add this here. Let it release. And slowly incorporate this into this hot 
be. We're going to let this oil mix completely. It is looking beautiful. It's got nice color going on in here. Gorgeous. Nicely done. I'm gonna get these all nicely broken up in here and condensed up. And so we're gonna let these flavors bloom here for a little bit, for a few minutes, until it's all nicely incorporated. As you can see, what beautiful color we have here already. So we need a bit more of cohesiveness here in this pot. And then we will add our lamb pieces to this so that we can finish cooking the lamb that way. When the lamb curry is almost done and the lamb is completely cooked through, we're going to add all of those crushed onions. Remember, the onions we fried up earlier, I've pounded it into a paste and don't worry if it looks clumpy. It will dissolve nicely into that gravy. Alrighty, so our yogurt and masala mixture has been cooking for about seven to eight minutes right now. And it is looking beautiful. The natural oils from the turmeric powder as well as our Greek yogurt has been be blooming beautifully right here. And at this point, I like what I see. It's so much more cohesive now in this pot. So we're going to add our lamb pieces now to this. So, gonna get started on this. Here, those lamb that we did before. We're going to add them all in, nice and gentle. There we go. And we're going to give it a nice little stir and get all of this beautiful meat nicely coated up. Wow, the color looks amazing in here. And I can't tell you just how beautiful this kitchen smells, oh my gosh. Wow, if only I was a true Kansama. <laughs> I can imagine in those beautiful royal kitchens, those mogul kitchens, wow. The smells and the aromas coming from there must be absolutely out of this world. All right, so we're going to let this simmer here for a couple of minutes so our meat can absorb a bit more of these flavors. And then we're going to add some water and allow that lamb to cook through. So our lamb, our mutton has been cooking away beautifully, absorbing all of those gorgeous masalas and spices. So basically at this point, I'm going to add some water to cover this. There we go, I've got a bowl of water here. I'm going to add this in enough to cover the meat. And as it cooks, I'll see if I need more as we go along because in a korma, the gravy is actually a very, very thick gravy and that's pretty much what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another little bit more of some water so that I can cover all of this beautiful mutton and coat it up nicely. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add another bowl of water. There we go. So our lamb, our mutton is now nicely covered. And you're probably wondering, well, throughout this whole ordeal, this whole video, it's not an ordeal by any means. Throughout the whole video, I've been using that word korma. Is it a korma? Is it a curry? What is a korma? Well, basically, a korma is basically a spicy version of a curry. And of course, it's Mughal style. What makes a korma? A korma is when you're using all of these spices, like I've used before, those whole spices. You've used them, toasted them, and pounded them into a powder. So basically in there, we have no whole spices. It's all been pounded and made into a powder to make this 
a korma. And of course, it's much more spicy and pungent that way. If I had chosen to not pound those spices and leave them whole, then that would be considered a mutton stew at that point. And of course, mobile style. But this isn't a stew. It is mutton korma, lamb korma, mogul style, and of course, it's alamala style. So I'm gonna put a lid on this baby right now and let this mutton all tenderize and cook to perfection. Then we're going to finish up by adding in all of that beautiful onion paste in a bit. Mogulaika zine consists of dishes developed in the medieval Indo-Persian culture centers of the Mughal Empire. It represents a combination of cuisines from the Indian subcontinent with cooking styles and recipes of Central Asian and Iranian cuisine. Mogulai cuisine is strongly influenced by the Turco-Persian cuisine of Central Asia, the region where the early Mughal emperors originally hailed from, and it has in turn strongly influenced regional cuisines of modern Afghanistan, Northern India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. Alrighty guys, so our lamb has been simmering away here. I had this low and slow for about two hours, and twice I added one cup of water each. So pretty much, you know, the lamb is nice and tender at this point. I don't want to overcook it. And as you can see, a lot of that meat is almost to the point of coming off the bones, which is fantastic. So this is the part where I am gonna lower this. And we're gonna add in all of this beautiful onion mixture from earlier. I'm gonna get this all in. That beautiful onion paste from the beautiful caramelized onions we made earlier. And now watch the magic happen. Watch the change in the korma and watch how this gravy thickens up beautifully. Now that's a mutton korma. This is a true mutton korma. Mogulay style. And of course, as you can see, those little chunks are all mixing in nice and beautiful. See how our curry, our gravy just instantly became so beautiful, rich, and thick. And that is exactly what we want. That's korma, guys. Absolutely beautiful. And there you have it. Next job, we'll be plating this baby up. As the curry is finishing, our korma is finishing, I am simply finishing now with my pink Himalayan sea salt to taste. And if you notice, I did not add salt before because that's not when you need to add it. So pretty much I added it at the end of the curry korma and now I'm gonna let this rest for a little bit and there you have it mogulai mutton or rather lamb korma a la mala style we're gonna be plating up in just a few guys check out that gravy gorgeous thick silky beautiful it is so rich and delicious looking. Alrighty guys, so our mutton korma mogulai style, our lamb mogulai style korma is all done and ready and it is all nicely plated up. I have garnished here with a little bit of cilantro, some red onions obviously, some green onions, cucumbers as well. I've served this actually with some saffron infused jira rice. And over here we have a little bit of dahi, which is Greek yogurt. And I've sprinkled that and finished it up with a bit of chili powder. And I've garnished that with a little bit of cilantro also up on top. 
Now let me get you guys in for a nice tight shot. There we go. That I choose to add in there. So we've also garnished the lamb shank over here for the mutton korma with a little bit of a one piece of a dried chili. And as you can see, take a look at that yogurt. It's been nicely doused with a bit of chili powder. And I'll show you what the rest looks like. I'm also going to finish up the saffron infused rice with a little pinch of chili powder as well. Maybe just a little bit more. There we go. And a little bit on those onions as well. Just a little sprinkling. There we go. Make everything look nice and pretty. Now I'm going to finish up a little bit of that korma with a little nice dusting around the side. Make everything look nice and pretty. There we go. A little bit on those cucumbers as well. There we go. Doesn't everything look nice? and pretty now. Alrighty, so time for the close-up. There we go, that beautiful saffron infused rice. It's the Jira rice that's infused with saffron. We've garnished once again with some cucumbers on the side, some fresh cilantro, fresh red onions, green onions, and I've also served this in addition with a bit of whole wheat naan, as you can see. Take a nice, good look at our korma right there. There is our yogurt. Here is the rest of that saffron infused rice. And here is the star of our show, our mutton korma. Nicely done. Guys, and there you have it. Mutton korma, mobilized style, a la mama style, I should say. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching and by the way, this is Mala coming to you from Mala's Kitchen to yours and don't forget, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and check out our new foodie group, okay? You'll find the links inside of our video. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Stay safe guys!